how to work the Imagine, just the basic sort of start up kind of information. So, obviously the first thing you would do is you'd obviously set it up as according to the instructions, plug it all in, put your ink cartridges in etc. So I'm assuming all of that has been done. And then the next thing once everything's all powered to the mains is that you need to switch on here on the actual imagine so this just pops up from here and you just press this button here and the imagine powers like up. the expression it is not a problem to exchange your cartridges while the imagine is switched on you can pop them in and out as and when you like it doesn't affect the cartridges at okay, all. so as you can hear it makes a little bit of noise as it gets going can see on the screen is these four icons so the next thing is we're going to take our imagine cartridge and you want to have it so that the name of the cartridge is facing you and we're going to pop it it's in a slot here so we've got a slot this side for your imagine cartridges and you've got a slot this side for your regular Cricut cartridges. You can put both in at the same okay, time. So we're going to pop this in, just making sure that it's going in correctly. And then as it goes in, a little green light comes on at the end of the cartridge. So as you can see, now we've popped that in, that the images have come up on the screen themselves. So up here is our cue bar. This is where the images that we have selected are put before, while we're still selecting and working on them before we press next and they go on our virtual mats here on the screen. Next door we've got a drop down menu that has fonts, icons, images, bonus content and then keypad view. So for example if we click the keypad view this is similar to what we would be used to on our expression. It's showing a virtual overlay but obviously in if we then go back to just bonus it just brings up those four images so when you look in your book on your imagine that says bonus content so if you know what you're looking for for example you know it's in the bonus content it might be quicker to click on that to find it and then we've got the images and then icons so there's a section in the book that's icons and the same thing as bonus content not the same content but the same idea that you could click to that and get there quickly and then fonts which there probably isn't any on this cartridge which there isn't and then back to all down to here we've got three little icons this icon here represents our imagine cartridge and as you can see it's highlighted in a brown and that means that's where we are at the moment we're in our imagine cartridge then you've got something here a little icon that looks very similar to that of the little imagine itself if you press on that and you need to hold it for a few seconds clicking doesn't always work you get the stock image content so you've got your basic shapes like your rounded corner square your circles your top note then you've also got card shapes they won't have a, a fold but it's giving you um, sort of shapes that are proportionate so this if you put in a height because all um, sizing is done on the height so when you um, edit your image and you put in it's three inches it's the height of the image that's three inches that would mean because it's ratio one to two that it would be six inches wide and then as you go along you get different proportions here so for this one you could literally do it at 8.5 and then you'd get 11 inches across okay so you've got all these images in your stock section so I find those really useful, for example, if I'm doing matting and layering and I want the pattern to um, blend in with my image, then I use these a lot for that. Okay, and then lastly, this little button here, which won't light up because we haven't got um, a cartridge in, but if you click on that one, when you have a cartridge in, it takes you to your regular Cricut cartridge that's this side. Okay, so let's go back to our Imagine now. Our imagine cartridge I should say and I want to pick this card that's just a bit further up here and it's a get well card so let's just see if we can find that and as you can see just all you need to do is use your stylus to move things along and back and it's this one here so when it's selected like that you can see the image that you're working on because it's got the white 
around it. You've got a plus key here, which will put it in your cue bar. And then you've got a little pencil, which is the one that allows you to do the editing. Personally, what I do is I edit and then when you've finished editing and hit OK, it automatically puts it in the cue bar. So it just skips one step because you're almost certainly going to want to adjust the height. The other thing to note is if you're going to do a load of things that are all going to be the same height, um, you know, you know you're going to be doing, I don't know, loads of different squares that are all going to be four inches high, then put that in first, do one, then do the editing, hit the size, and then do the rest of your images afterwards because what will happen is the first image on the queue determines the size of those that follow unless you adjust it. So if you put in four inches on the first image, everything else will be four inches until you tell it different. So then if you did a couple of four inches and then you change the next one to five inches, the following images then would be five inches. So it's quite good, convenient to be able to remember that because it's so annoying sometimes when you do something and then you have to go through and change all the sizing whereas if you've done the first one it makes it a lot easier okay so this is the one we want to do so I want to go in and edit it so I've pressed my little pencil and again you need to just make sure you hold down for a little while okay so it, here we are in our editing screen so here's our main image and here are the layers that go with this image. This is not dissimilar in a way to the expression in that these are kind of like your layer keys that you would get. So if you were on your expression, you press layer one and then you'd get that layer. This one is similar in that way, but it's kind of done it all on one button and you can use them as and how you like. Here, is telling you combined or layers so your image when it goes on the mat will be combined so you'll get one image and it will cut just around the edge this one here is the layers and when you go to your cue bar you'll see all of these layers will be put in now you do not have to keep all of these layers you can delete them off your cue bar so let me just show you this we won't do anything here we'll just apply because that puts it up in the cue bar and as you can see look you've got all the different layers in the cue bar but you could click back to there and then backspace and delete whichever layers you want so you don't have to keep all of the images and down here we've got a clear all button and that clears everything so you can clear everything all in one go if you want so let's go back to our editing and just quickly show you now you've got flip horizontal sorry flip vertically so it flips it over upside down for you Let's change it back. Then you've got flip horizontally. So it flips it side to side. Okay. Then here we've got an undo button and we've got a revert button. Undo takes you back one step. Revert takes you back to the original image as it was. So if you've done loads of steps and you've changed loads of the colours and things and then you think, oh, you know, I really preferred it as it was when it started. Rather than going back like five or six times with undo, you can just click revert and it goes instantly back to the original image. Along here is your colour palette. So this is the colour palette for greeting cards inside and out. So you've got all your different patterns here and then you've also got all your colours. And anything that you click on here, you can change the colour of it. So for example, if we clicked on that one there, that becomes that. Now, because it is an image, sometimes it, it will completely flood fill it. So you do have to play around. Other times it might just pick out the elements, so you might leave the chicken white or whatever. So if we tried this one, it is going to flood fill it completely. So again, when you play with that, you end up with a layered circle here. So you could actually completely use that, just those two images, and have a layered circle in patterns nothing to do with the image that you originally had there so again you can play around and here we can do revert and it will take those both back to how they were originally if you have this one clicked on it's going to pattern and color the whole image so all of these elements are going to become that pattern so just make sure when you are clicking if you want only one element that you actually click on that one element now if we go back this way this here means no colour and this here is your colour wheel so you can adjust 
and custom color make your own color and say we had that lovely lilac there we can then make that darker if you follow that there and we can so you've got all different things you've also got your rgb code so if you go on the internet for example for disney you'll find that you can find this actual rgb code of um, mickey shorts and then you can put that in into that section there and you will get exactly the correct color that you need okay when you found the color you want you can press apply and then you'll find that these two colors that you've just created or one color have been added at the end here of your standard colors that are already in your imagine okay let's now just revert that back to when you revert by the way it will not remove the colors that you've created it just removes the fact that you have colored in your images okay now I'm not actually going to do the size here because I want my image to be as big as it possibly can so I'm actually going to use the fit to page feature so I'm not going to worry about doing the sizing here so I've got it on combine because I want it as one layer and I'm going to hit apply okay so my image is in my cue bar and we've gone through these so the next thing we need to do is hit next if there's no more images you want to add so now my image is on my virtual mat so you've got here various things you've got your fit to page autofill apply all so um, if you got like a pattern you want to do you can add it like so to all okay and then we need to see if we can undo I don't know how you undo it <laughs> I've forgotten let's just add it back in okay and then down here you've got your settings so that's your multi cut your speed and your pressure do watch this because um, especially when you're using the gypsy um, I find that I forget to check this and quite often my pressure is incorrect and that's really really annoying um, it seems to have quite often default the pressure down to three um, so just keep an eye on that depending on your card stock I always personally need it on maximum okay so we've got all of these settings here and this is your page size by the way so you could change the size of the actual page that you have got that you're going to place on the mat again I don't all usually bother with that myself I just know that it's going to roughly come in there but if you've got an odd size piece of paper then it might be quite handy to know um, or if you want to do the fit to page feature but your page is smaller again that would be useful okay so all down here we've got a settings button and you've got various things so here you've got your print and cut print only cut only so you could use it as an expression you could use it as a printer or you can use it as both you have various types of print quality and you've got various types of uh, material that you can work on this is your ink cartridges and this is actually telling me my coloured ink which I've had these inks now for um, 14 months so and it's just come up this is the first I've noticed that it's come up with a warning to say my ink is getting a bit low black is okay but the color is getting a bit low then we've got a setting here to clean the print heads and then you've got your calibrations and restore to default now this is another one that I use quite a lot is the border preferences I personally if I'm doing my own designing if I've changed the design quite often that the border that it puts around to give a little margin for any cut error is not the right colour it seems to stay as the original colour rather than the colour you've made it so you might have changed the colour to pink but the old colour was like a I don't know a brown uh, tin or something I don't know what it could be we were doing a tin there so you know maybe it was red and we changed it to, to pink um, when you cut you don't want to see a little bit of the red showing through so what I tend to do is custom do it by custom and you can either change the colour or what I usually do is change the thickness down to zero so I don't see any of that border 
that's just a personal choice it does mean that if your calibration is very slightly off you might get a little bit of white but I prefer that because I can see it more easily and then I can just snip it off if I needed to I don't usually find that happens very often but just in case okay so then you press apply when you've finished whatever and then we're going to hit fit to page and it's going to fit our card to page and as you can see look the pressure's gone down to three so we're going to put that back up to five okay so that's all now ready to go to print and cut okay so i've loaded my mat with a piece of american crafts card stock this is one of the ones that i find personally i really really like and it's one of my favorites what you need to make sure is that your paper is nice and square on the mat you don't want it overlapping the edges you may find as the mat gets a bit older that it doesn't stick as well and what I do is I use the Crafters Companion Stick and Spray which is um, repositionable adhesive. Don't spray it on your mat, I know there's loads of hints and tips about how to do this. To me that takes so much time, so much effort, can't be bothered. Just give a quick squirt in a few key places on the back of your paper, give it a second for the um, propellant to disappear which is what they advise, and then plonk it down onto your, pick, uh, onto your mat. That's not going to cause your mat any problem because you're not going to be accidentally missing and miss doing it in the wrong place. So to me, that seems a much more simple option. Okay, so now we need to do our, we need to load our mat and get cutting. So the first thing we're going to do is hit next. Now it's reminding me that I've got low ink, so that's fine, I'm happy with that, I know. So you come up with a screen that says print and go, print and cut. So we want to make sure the arrow is pointing into the machine and place your mat, even if you're not cutting, uh, even if you're not printing, you still put your mat in the same place. It will shoot it out the back and take it back in ready to cut. So you don't have to do anything, you just make sure you put it in there. Now when I put my mat in, I make sure that it's butted up right against here. If you do that every time and when you calibrate, then you'll find that you should get the, you know, you're always putting your mat in the right place because this side moves. As you can see, as you go, it slightly moves. So I find that if I butt it up against this side, I might not have put it in in the same place as when I calibrated it, and then you're going to get it slightly off on the cut. So I always make sure I place it up against this side and then push it lightly until you feel resistance and stop. You don't need to like give it a good shove or anything, just hold it in place and then press go on the screen or play button here and continue to hold it until you feel the machine pull it from your hand and then it's going to go off and print and cut. So let's just have a listen. I think the Imagine is noisy so when it gets going I'm just going to let you have a hear and see what it sounds like. So it's just printing at the moment. Okay, so it's nearly finished the print and then it's going to grab it and take it through and this is where it gets noisy. So now I want to just do a quick run through again, um, but without all the chattery bits, just literally this, 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 rather than the, all the explanation. And this is where I said there's, they've got the layers like they did with the expression. And so I only want this, uh, this one here, I think, where it says chicken soup is the best medicine. So I'm going to use that one. So I need, in order to get that, I need to hit my layers key. I need to apply and it's going to put everything up so then all I need to do is backspace and delete the ones that I don't want so it leaves me this one so what we've done is we've put our image in the queue 
selected it as and how we want. Hit next. Now I want it bigger than that. So let's go in. Okay, let's go back in and adjust the size. And here's our true size, by the way. I meant to show you this. True size and relative. So again, this is like real dial size on our expression. This is how it will really come out. And this is the element size. So we really probably want that. I want it to be safe. Well, it, um, about four inches, I think, in true size. So let's apply. Okay. Now I'm going to use the same piece of paper, but I'm going to put it in with this pretending to be my arrow. It's perfectly fine to do that. It's not a problem. So we're going to. We've got our image on our mat. We've adjusted it, etc. So then we just hit next. Again. Ignore that, you won't get that unless you are literally going lower bink. And then I'm going to push my mat in until it um, feel resistance. Hit go. Hold it until the machine takes it in. And off it goes to print and cut. So really simple procedure. It's just obviously I was trying to explain everything so it just took a bit longer. But that's... You can see how quick it is. Just depends on you know, how much designing and playing around you're doing on the Imagine. I personally do all of my work on my Gypsy. I very rarely uh, do like work on the Imagine itself. Um, the reason I do that is because it's much simpler. If I had this cartridge now and um, I had an image and I wanted to change it, to a pattern from a another imagine cartridge. There is a way of doing it, but it's a lot more fiddly. Whereas the Gypsy, I can literally just click on it, change it, and well, I've got a video on how I do that, but you can do it much more simply. So that's why I do that. Oops, <laughs> don't think that quite works, but not to worry. <laughs> And then the other thing is I forgot is you do have a little thing here to catch your mat. I don't find it works very well, but it's better than not. Now, clearly I slightly miscalculated that. That was my fault. I usually do do that and it's not a problem, but uh, that's not, not a worry. I'm not too worried. I wasn't really planning on making the card. But let me just show you. Ignoring the chunk out the bottom. You can see what a fun cartridge this is. I mean, obviously, the I think that this for actual card base American Crafts cardstock is a little bit flimsy for actual card base. So I would have used something a bit a bit heavy weight than that. But you can see the point, and I hope you've enjoyed having a quick look through the Imagine with me. And I hope that that's answered your questions. And I'll see you all again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.